Hi, I'm Gabe Zickerman, and welcome to the Gamification Masterclass produced with O'Reilly. Today, throughout the Masterclass, you'll find us referring to material that you can use to complete a series of exercises along with what we're describing. Visit GamificationU.com to download the materials and complete them. There, you'll also find a series of challenges that you can complete to unlock bonus material that will help you gamify your product, service, or brand. Once again, visit GamificationU.com to download the materials and follow the challenges. I'm Gabe Zickerman. Thanks very much. Enjoy the masterclass. So I want to start off with the working definition of gamification. And gamification is a term that's being bandied about a lot. People are kind of interested in it. Uh, it's the use of game thinking and game mechanics to engage users and solve problems. And I want to reinforce that it's both game thinking and game mechanics, and it's both solving problems and engaging users. And these things are all slightly different, but different enough that it's worth uh, pointing out. So let's start with the problem that we might want to solve. By and large, little children don't like broccoli. And it turns out that there's actually a good reason why they don't like broccoli. 70% of the population carries a gene called HTAS2R38. And it was discovered um, in Philadelphia uh, by researchers that 70% of the population carries this gene. And the reason why we have this gene is in the old days, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cabbage block the uptake of important chemicals to the thyroid. And so we adapted uh, this particular genetic difference in order to protect ourselves so we wouldn't eat things which were dangerous. Now, it took us about 10,000 years to domesticate vegetables like broccoli and cabbage so they're more or less safe to eat. But it only takes about 12 years for a child to go from hating broccoli to loving broccoli. Now, this is pretty confounding, right? We still have the same mouth when we're age 12 as we did when we're age zero. And it's not like we've eaten a whole bunch of broccoli in that time, because frankly, we didn't like it. So it's not, we haven't exposed ourselves to the flavor of broccoli and become desensitized to it. What's happened is our perception of the flavor of broccoli has changed over a 12 year period. So given enough time, you actually perceive the flavor differently. Because in the research, adults who have the gene still perceive broccoli as being bitter. They just no longer think bitter is bad. So what if we want to make behavior change happen in less than 12 years? What technique would we actually use to do that? And the first thing we'd want to do is we'd want to engage users, so bring them into a loop where we could teach them something different about the flavor of broccoli instead of just letting that happen over a period of time. And this brings us to the topic of engagement, which is the other main reason why people want to use gamification. It's closely related to uh, behavior change. So it's no coincidence that we use the term engagement to describe the period of time when two people's relationship is at its best. The reason is, uh, and conceptually in our, you know, in our culture, um, you know, this is the moment at which we have a great deal of connection with an idea, a person, a place, a thing. Um, we use some, definite, some terms to describe engagement. We don't have a single metric, for example, on the web or in mobile technology that we can point to that says engagement. Page views don't exactly cut it, right? Unique users don't exactly cut it. We think of engagement as really being made up of a few different metrics. Recency, frequency, duration, virality, and this implied notion of ratings, right? So these are all these things put together. If we could read all of these things about a person in relation to a particular experience, we would start to get at some notion of engagement. And engagement's important because the current prevailing theory, and certainly what's being proved in the shift towards a more peer-to-peer -peer viral or social marketing environment, is that traditional kind of brand marketing doesn't really work. We need to create engagement and be behind engagement, revenue follows. So a user is very engaged with the process, that generates revenue, not buy, 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 generates engagement, right? So another way of thinking about engagement or another term that we've used historically to describe engagement is loyalty. And to a great extent, loyalty and engagement are sort of synonymous words. So when I say the word loyalty though, people generally think of a couple of different uh, modalities. The first one, of course, is the loyalty of, say, a dog towards its master. Um, you know, this is a sort of unfailing loyalty of, like, I will jump off a cliff for you uh, no matter what you do. That's not exactly the kind of loyalty that we're talking about. And, of course, the second kind of loyalty that you might be thinking of is, like, you know, sexual loyalty between a couple, for example, who's just gotten engaged. And I can't predict your level of monogamy in your relationship, so we're not going to use that as the definition either. Really, loyalty in this particular case and for today's discussion is about getting users to make an incremental choice in your favor when all things are mostly equal. So getting a user to choose one product over another when basically everything is equal. Now, if things are grossly unequal, loyalty, loyalty tends not to be that meaningful. But when things are mostly equal, 
uh, loyalty is very, very important. Now, let's also talk about what gamification is not. And I want to be really super clear about what we're not doing today. First of all, we are not going to talk about crappy badges on your crappy website. Okay? If you're here to have gamification fix your core problem, that is you don't have a good product, you don't have good user engagement, you don't understand your market, gamification will not solve that problem for you. It will not solve it. And number two, we're not here to talk about actually making games. So if what's in your mind right now is, we're going to make a 3D shooter where we go through a world and pull products off a shelf, we're not doing that either. Okay? We're talking about the technique of game thinking and game mechanics to engage users and solve problems. And we'll talk in more detail about what exactly we mean and how they're different from this, but I just want you to put these two things out of your mind right now. So a little bit about me. My name is Gabe Zickerman. Uh, I'm the chair of the Gamification Summit, uh, gsummit.com. It's the uh, only event, actually, that focuses on this topic and uh, lots of really interesting speakers, and you're welcome to check that out. I'm also the author of two books, Game-Based Marketing and Gamification by Design, as well as the editor of the Gamification blog, gamification.co, um, and I advise and mentor startups. I do a lot of public speaking, and um, I'm really excited to have you here. Today's plan is we're going to learn to bake a cake. And I use this cake metaphor uh, very specifically for you because of the tone and timber that gamification has taken on. If all we wanted to do was put a little bit of game icing on top of a styrofoam mold of a cake, I could get a user to take one slice of that cake right, from the display, but after they take their first bite of it, they're not really going to like it. A successful cake is made up both of the structure, its layers, and the frosting, the balance between the two things, fun and substance. right? sugar and structure and we're going to do all that we're going to talk about all that today and we're going to talk about how baking gamification into your product or service from the ground up and understanding your customer produces the ideal product how we do that we're, our recipe is four basic components we're going to talk about the foundation and basics what is gamification how does it work we're going to talk about player motivations which is what drives people to actually do what they do we're going to talk about game mechanics which are the tools that you can actually use uh, to create gamification in your product or service, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, how we implement those things. So let's get started.